Welcome to the first episode of MMA Uncaged TV. I'm Ian M16 Butlin. I'm stood here with Jamie, the haymaker here. Jamie, what have we got going on? We've got a fantastic show. We've got top, top lightweights. We've got Kay Musa, Brendan Lockname. We've got Antonio Sheldon, the up and comer. And we've got none other than 50 Cal himself, Martin Stapleton, Bama World Champion. And look out for Martin Stapleton making an exclusive announcement of his next fight on Bama. Bring them out. We've got two of UK's standout lightweights, Brendan Lockdown and Kay Musa. <laughs> Good to see you, hey guys. Thank you very much for coming today. Obviously, we worked together um, a few weeks ago on the Big Tanko show. How about give us a little bit of feedback? How do you think that show went? Show went incredible. Well, you know yourself. Um, put some good dollar into it. Put some good time and good effort, and we matched some great fights. And uh, you know the show was great. It brought yourself in. Brought Chris in, we brought some, you know, the best guys around the country, the best medics, the best everything. And um, fights went great and, you know, you can't buy the atmosphere. That's that's the thing what really stood out for me, is you can buy all these things and buy all the best people, but you can't buy atmosphere. And, like, been to even certain UFC shows where they spent millions on it and you just not got that atmosphere. And it just really did have, you know, like the old uh, UCC days when we used to Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, I kind of compared it to that a little bit, you know, when you was in there and it was like a dungeon. Yeah, That, that yeah, old yeah. Manchester feel and, you know... Yeah. We got that, and you know that's the really thing what I was happy about. On, on the other side, Kane, yeah, you say you can't you can't buy buy the atmosphere, yeah. but you can buy the production, and the production was second to none. What did you think of that? Yeah, um, that was something that you know me and Brendan being fighters, that was something with our business partners that we spoke about going forward. That production was something that we really wanted to big emphasis on as a fighter. It's it's really important to know you feeling to to fight on a big show. So that's something that we we put a lot of emphasis on. Also, you know, big shout out to Carl Prince for the, the matches as well. The, the fights were amazing and that's what added to the atmosphere. See, I mean, for yourself, Bren, obviously you fought on the show. Uh, what was that like, obviously, being a co-owner to it and, yeah, yeah. and fighting on your own show? How, how did that Just feel? Just the walk down. Yeah, I mean, absolute madness because, you know, we uh, played a big part in, like, developing the show and then, like, what happened on the night was I had 10 fighters on that I'd trained as well. So uh, the emotions were crazy. Um, I tried not getting there till late. Obviously, I couldn't corner my guys, and um, I was like sat there at my house, just thinking, I wonder how it's going. And I tried <laughs> staying off the chat that we've all got, and no, it was really difficult. And then when I got to the show, and I just went, went in the back, obviously, Loz had just lost his fight, and you know, a couple of lads were all bruised up, marked up, and then I was just like, yeah, it's just a, a proper surreal experience. I thought, wow, I've got to go in now after after seeing all this, and. I don't know, I have to rethink a few things with the show because it's a lot to take on. And, you know, if I was fighting high-level opposition, which I plan to do on there, that's a lot to take in. So it's definitely something I have to reconsider for the future. I, I was going to ask that question to you, actually, Kane. How is it for you? You know, you, you've got guys, and like I say, with Loz losing, yeah. how do you keep the morale high in the, in, in the back room so that the other guys don't go down? Well, it's just more about, you know, the, the, the morale that we've got as a team. You know, I believe all powers, everyone's warriors in our in our camp um, and we understand that battle. You know, we, we, we say like, you know, win, lose or draw, we celebrate war. So we have to go in and just keep everybody's spirits high and make sure that everybody knows, you know, you've got to go in there and get the job done. Yeah, I mean, the, the show itself was, was obviously fantastic and the, and the production was brilliant, but the fights themselves. Now, Carl Prince, obviously, like you just mentioned a minute ago, how much of an influence did he have on that? Carl, Carl put some great fights together. Kane put some together as well, and I, you know I, we have got, I've got ten fighters at All Powers that are on mm -hmm. it as well, so they were all raring to go. And you know you're not going to see a bad fight out of my lads, are you? We're mm -hmm. in there to scrap, aren't they? At the end of the day, and um, you know we went eight and two on the night as a gym, and that, you know that's really good because you know I didn't give none of them easy fights. We're fighting SBG Island, they're fighting all mm -hmm. the top gyms around the country and around the UK. So I made them all have tough fights and, you know, we come through, you know, we did well. How's Loz feeling after his fight? Obviously, he had a really tough fight, he had a good first round, mm -hmm. tough second round. How's he feeling coming back and how's he changed his training? I think with, with Loz, it was just more about, you know, him him as a fighter. He's, he's a warrior, you know, so he, he's obviously after a, after a defeat, it, it affects everybody differently. Loz, you know, he went away, he's learnt from it. Um, he knows what, what he needs to do moving forward. We've got a lot of focus on Loz for his next fight. He's, you know, he, Will he, that be on Tanko too? Most definitely, it's going to be on Tanko too. He let myself and Brendan know that he's ready to go as soon as the date was announced. So, yeah, he's ready to go. It was a tough fight for him, but that's a fight game. There's been a lot of talk on the internet about Paddy Pimblett versus Brendan Lockman. Mm -hmm. 
I was hoping that was going to be on Tanko too, you know, the way that it was going, but then very quickly Paddy signed back with uh, Cage Warriors. Is yeah. that something that could happen on Cage Warriors or is that you two going in different directions? I mean, I just don't know how much I can say at the minute. <laughs> you know, you came with me, he's like, we contract and all that. But uh, all I'm saying is, all I will say in the matter is, I think Paddy wants to fight, I want to fight. You know, there's other people involved. There's, there's all types of people involved nowadays in this MMA game. It's not like it used to be. Two guys want to fight and they end up fighting. Everyone's got a manager and a co-manager and a sub-manager. And everyone's got to have a say in it. Yeah, and a <laughs> sub -promoter. So, um, come on, the whole world wants to see it. You know, let's all get together and make this fight happen. You know, it, it, you can't ignore us forever. Yeah. Um, we both want it to happen and everyone should pull together to make it happen. I think, obviously, with regards to your gym as well, the All Powers Gym. So tell us a little bit about that, because obviously it's not been around for, as an MMA gym for too long, has it? But So tell us a little bit about the uh, the background with the gym and obviously how, how well, well it's come on over the last couple of years. It's a bit of a mad story, really. Uh, when I went on the Ultimate Fighter, um, I came back and there's a guy, Jamie Lays, who's got a massive thing in Tanko and in the gym. He, uh, he's a friend of Panicus's and he come back and he, uh, he said to Panicus, oh, is there any chance you can get me to meet that Brendan? He watched the show with his wife. You know, he's, he's a businessman. He's done well for himself, so I met him. And he was like, how do you feel about opening a gym in the centre of Manchester? Um, and I was only like, what? I was only younger at the time. It was, what, four years ago now? So I was like, yeah, sweet. So then uh, <laughs> opened the gym in Manchester. And then um, all the lads just started pouring in, pouring in, pouring in. And then just the rest is history, really. Now we, we, we've moved location. We've got a big cage, full-size cage, full-size ring, three big matted areas. And it's just a, a really good gym. And, you know, we've got some good fighters coming through. Well, Ken, you've had a, obviously had a really good winning streak, yeah. and then there was a bit of a hiccup with your last yeah. fight. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, no problem. Uh, you know, it's one thing with me is in, in the fight game is what I always say is like, you know, a fight's a fight, and I think that I fought a high level opponent, world class opponent. A um, few factors going into it, moving into the fight, but the top and bottom of of, of it is, you know, I got beat by the better man in the night. Um, you know, I feel like moving forward, there was a few few mishaps in my camp, a few things that happened leading up to it. You know, there was um, my uncle, Tony Musa, he wasn't there for the camp, he, he was he was ill. Um, so there was a few issues that led up to the fight, but you know, as a fighter, you just have to get on with it and get, get the job done. Um, top and bottom on the night, Kane didn't turn up um, and I got caught by a better man. But you know, moving forward, um, we know there were certain areas that we need to focus on that we're definitely going to get nailed for this next next up and coming fight. I think in fairness with that as well, Matt Dykes has just signed for the UFC as well, hasn't exactly. it? So it just shows out what caliber fighters that you're fighting against. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about what's next for yourself then. Obviously fighting on Tanko next. So yeah. So um, as you're aware, we've got our our date third um, of December, Tanko two. I'm going to be main event there. We've got a fight confirmed. It's a it's a very good fighter. Um, experienced fighter, so yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be fireworks, um, and just can't wait to get the announcement out. The announcement will be within the next day or two. Um, obviously, you guys will be first to know as well, also. So yeah, that's where we're up to. Fantastic, mate. Excellent work, right? And what have you got next, in Brendan? You say I'm literally in the middle of about 27 organisations, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know where I'm at right now. I'm just trying to make big fights happen. I'm not willing to settle for Eden Newtons again or any of that. Yeah. I want a massive fight. There's no secrets, you know. I'm calling out the biggest names out there because, uh, you know, I've been doing this ten years now. I'm not. I'm not willing to sit around and let my career pass me by now. I'm 27 this year, and um, I really want to push now and fight these big names. I feel like I've uh, I've got the experience and the caliber now to be in there with anyone. Okay, well, excellent. You I mean you start you started the year extremely well as well, obviously with the knockout of the year, yeah. and then to move on to to fight someone like Eden. Yeah. I mean. Uh, it, tell us what, what why that came about. Well, uh, we tried making a few other fights happen on Bama, etc., etc., etc. And I don't know. There seems to be a lot of dodging, ducking, and diving going on at the minute. Um, I'm just not into it. I just want to make good fights happen for the people. You know, fans. You know, they've they've been good to us over the years, and we, they deserve to see these sort of fights. And I want to test myself. I want to go into a fight where I'm scared to death, mm -hmm. thinking if I make one mistake, this guy's going to kill me. And I've just not had that now for the last two. And uh, I really do want that. And um, that's why I'm calling out the Paddy Pimlets and the bigger names. So mm -hmm. hopefully we can make these fights happen. And I'm willing to go to other organisations if they're fair with me, because I have got my own thing going. Um, and, you know, I think I bring a lot to the table. So it'd be good to sit down with these other organisations and make something happen as a co thing. Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. Yeah. Um, is there anyone you want to thank just before we finish? 
Yeah, yourselves. You know, yeah, this is. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm really. Uh, I'll support you guys all the way. You know, he's, he's been very influential in MMA over the last couple of years, and it's great to see you do well and, and get something like this going. I think the sport definitely needs it. You know, we're growing now at the minute. MMA's hit a boom, as you guys know. Mm -hmm. Kind of started a bit slow, then it yeah. went up, then down again, <laughs> yep. and now with the rise of Conor and everything else, it seems to be going through the roof again. So things like this need to start happening more often. You know, Adam, can we play the best lightweight video? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just yeah. want to see what these two think. Yeah. Get a bit yeah. of feedback. Yeah. I just want to say something. All those lightweights out there talking the shit, talking like they're the best lightweight in the country. I am the best lightweight in the country. All you sorry to talk your shit. Step up and back it up. Everybody, listen. I'm going to be here come the 19th of November. Tournament. It's going to be an eight man tournament for the best lightweight. The lightweights from Japan and America and everywhere. I'm going to smash everything. Lightweight, I am the best lightweight. Oh, Step up and back it up, you pussies. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's about, man. That's I think that about. I think that was it, word for word. I think we're missing a bit of that this day and age. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I asked for um, Charlie Leary. Charlie Leary, yeah. I would have yeah. fought Charlie. I think he, you know. What do you think of that fight with him and Sinclair? I just Sinclair think that's sort of like he's not in it no more. He just don't. It, to me, I mean, no, a long time out as well. Yeah, right, when you've had a long break, I just it's, think that he's literally heart, he's just... hearted the hunger. What you, what I seen in that fight was I seen the hunger from Charlie was more than the hunger mm. from Rob, and that's the top and bottom yeah. of it. Because yeah, yeah, if yeah, it yeah, wasn't, Rob would have been fitter. Because fi if course the course fitness, I think the fitness was what lost Rob the fight there because his his experience and skill shown he was controlling at times and he was dominating but then you could just see that Charlie had more fitness and he was grinding and he was more hungry and that's what got him the fight it got mm. him the win and for me I was I seen it and I thought you know what I said to myself because I heard he said something about us prior to on his last win I was like okay well let me see him fight someone who, 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 I, who I respect as a fighter like you know and then you know he, he, he went for um he beat Rob and I was like right well now it's time, I'll go. I'll be, I'll be yeah. honest, it was the hunger that stopped me fighting. I just couldn't stop eating. I don't want to come down now. I've come down a bit. I'm, down from I'm working back down to you too. <laughs> I need another now. video hey, like that. You want to prove he's the best lightweight. I've never, I've never seen a Who's man next? drop so many weight classes <laughs> in six weeks. Let's mind the video don't come out of him calling me and Brendan out on it. <laughs> next tank, I'll be like that. Hey, wait a minute, is it? Where did Ian go? <laughs> Right then, guys. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. This was MMA on Cage TV. Two excellent stars to start off with. K. Musa, Brendan Lochnan. Obviously going to be stars of the future. What a pleasure it has been having you here. Appreciate yeah, thanks, guys. That. Thank, you thank you very much. Cheers, guys. Thank you, mate. Cheers, mate. Cheers, Jake. Thank you, guys. Cheers, Jake. Here we go. The second half of MMA on Cage TV, the lightweights. Who have we got on now? Well, please welcome FCC lightweight amateur champion Antonio Sheldon and none other than 50 Cal himself, the Bama World Champion Martin Stapleton. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, it's great to have you here. Sat on the couch. Thanks for the invite, mate. No problem. It's always good to catch up. <laughs> it's always good to catch up, yeah. Not over a beer this time. Martin, tell us about your fights you've got lined up. Yeah, let's let's get it out there for straight away. You've got a fight, a Bama World Title defense. Uh, well, this no, this this isn't. A, th this next fight's not a defense. It's another World Title fight. I'm dropping down to featherweight to fight Ronnie Man for the vacant featherweight World Title. Um, I asked I asked for Dequesnoy, you know Tom Dequesnoy. I think that's how you say it. Not clear, really. I'm from Rochdale. Forgive me. <laughs> but um, obviously he's dropped down to bantamweight now. Would have been a good fight against him because he's from TriStar and he's got a lot of hype around him. But he's dropped down. So it's going to be me and Ronnie Mann on uh, November 25th. Well, that's a very, very experienced yeah, yeah, fighter. Yeah. Yeah. What, what do you know about him and how are you changing your training? for? The, I ain't going to change my training. I won't change my training if I was fighting GSP, mate. I, I believe the way we train is the best way you can train. Uh, the, the way we've got it set up at Full Contact Performance and SPG. My training, I train all year round. You know, um, Ronnie Mann's an experienced guy. He's a jiu-jitsu black belt. He's obviously, I, I don't know, about 35, 40 fights, some of like that. But... Uh, I just think I'm the best fighter in the world right now. I, I, I really do. I think I'm the best fighter between featherweight and welterweight. So, put See, me in with, with anyone. With that, I mean, obviously, in the last, over the last couple of years since you came back, for, obviously from from working away, mm -hmm. you came back and you've you've said you've said you're going to do a lot of things and you've done them pretty much. But one of my favourite moments of you is the, is the Gav Sterrett fight. I think <laughs> tell us a little bit about that fight. 
Uh, I mean, going into that fight was... Like with me, I like big challenges, yeah. The bigger the challenge, the bigger the, the reward and it. Bigger risk, bigger reward. The more, more, challenge, more challenge yourself, the better the feeling after it. Going into the fight with Gavin was a bit like um, I had that fire in my belly. You know, you need a little bit of fear in you when you when you go into fight someone. You, if you're fighting someone that you that you know you can walk through or you, you think you can beat them on an off day, it's not the same. But going in there fighting with Gav Sterrett, you know, he's got parts of his game that you know if he lands that right kick on you, you're going to sleep. You know, if you get in his guillotine, you're going to sleep. So I went in there, I had that them. Not, no, I don't really. I suffer, never suffer from nerves, but I had that feeling that I knew. I knew it had to be my best performance, and I think it was. You know, I landed a couple of shots. Got the takedown, took his back and got the choking. Um, Gav's probably the most I've ever respected an opponent, you know, most I've feared an opponent. So I was happy to get the, you know, the finish the way I did. And uh, for you, um, obviously you train with Stapes on a regular basis, both yeah. at SPG um, Manchester and at Full Contact Performance Centre. I can remember the first time Stapes walked in the gym, you know, as a, as a pretty enthusiastic Marine. And um, it never seemed to get the concept of light sparring. Has that changed? <laughs> <laughs> Has that changed? Could you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, no. <laughs> Says you. <laughs> <laughs> All I can say is, uh, yeah, he's, he's cut, he split my wig a few times. I tried to have a nice word of him about it and he says, Bro, when I'm in the zone, I'm in the zone. <laughs> that's all I get. It's a disclaimer, isn't it? Listen, I'm still looking pretty, so whatever. Well, that's debatable. No, I'm, I'm telling you, obviously, you've got a you know, current FCC lightweight amateur champion, and you've got a big fight coming up. Tell us a little bit about that fight on ice. Um, uh, I know we've got uh, Keevan Lister. Um, he's an experienced uh, army as well as I am. Um, he's got a good record. Purple belt like me. Um, I just think it's an evenly matched fight. And... Um, that's all I know, really. I'm just going to do the same as I always do. Train every day. Um, and light just sparring. Um, loads of light sparring. Loads of yeah. sparring. <laughs> well, all I know is I'm never going to get hit off any of the guys I'm facing like I get hit off him, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm always confident. Obviously, uh, you're part of the FCP PC uh, setup you have been since day one. Tell us a little bit about the SBG um, <coughs> connection as well with yourself. Um, well, I've been going down there now about 18 months, two years, and uh, yeah. It is, it is different, you know, most of the guys down at FCPC are, are Amis, you know, the professionals down there. It, it, since I've been there, I've, I've come on loads, yeah. you know, you've got, you know the names. Yeah. It's just, um, it's ridiculous, but... Uh, it's a yeah. shark tank. Every yeah, you've got guys like Saul Rogers, so, Matt Inman, yeah. you know, on a regular basis. I've just come from there now, that's like, Jamie kindly mentioned I look like I'm in my PE kit, I didn't get a chance <laughs> to get... <laughs> I didn't get a chance to get changed, come straight from pro team, killer session today, Saul, Matt, the, the guys, the names on the mat, it's just, you know, you couldn't ask for anything more. So that's why I'm always confident going into a fight, because the par partners have got the coaches, I know I'm the best the place. Even the cornerman, you've got, you know, Carl I'm in the best place. Yeah. Carl's a phenomenal yeah. cornerman. I've, some, I've, I've, seen, down yeah, so well. I've seen guys win fights that they probably should have lost just because Carl's the cornerman yeah. yeah. and they've got <laughs> the other guy's head, yeah. you know. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Now, just a little thing about diet in SBG. There seems to be, I mean, this is a rumour I've heard that the <laughs> vegan diet is sneaking into <laughs> SBG. Is that something you guys have taken now, on? Now, mate, we've got a few rebels trying to break in and trying yeah. to push it on up upon us like Saul Rogers. He's, you know, he's, he's a little... He's, As a Marine, you're trying to... He's like a vegan dealer. You're trying to stop that. <laughs> trying to push it on us, you know what I mean? But we're, we're, trying to, we're trying to keep him back, hold him back. So how's Saul going for his ACB fight? We were hoping to see him here today, but obviously he's fighting at the weekend. Big fight on ACB. How, yeah. How's he looking? Sol's is what do I say? He's a, he's a phenom. He's got the best wrestling for MMA in the world. You put him in with any top five guy in the UFC right now, he'll take him down at will. He's got the best MMA wrestling I've ever experienced, and I've and I've trained on some good wrestling mats over in America. You know, I've trained with some seriously good wrestlers. There's no one when you put small gloves on and you involve punches and kicks. There's no one can wrestle like Sol, and I mean that. It's not just because my teammate. I mean that. Throw him in there with Frankie Edgar, Eddie Alvarez, all these decent wrestlers now, and he'll do the same to them. His wrestling's phenomenal. Um, last, the last, I don't know, couple of years he's been at SPG, his, his ground game and his striking has just gone through the roof as well. I just feel sorry for that guy on Saturday night, man. <laughs> 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 it's not going to be a nice night. You, 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 sorry, you mentioned uh, Alvarez. Mm. Obviously, SPG teammate Conor McGregor is going to be fighting yeah, for, the, right, for yeah. the UFC title. How do you see that one going? I see Conor knocking him out. We, we spoke about that before. I think uh, Eddie Alvarez, he's not going to knock Conor out. He's not going to. He's, he's, he's don't get me wrong, he's, he's a strong, powerful striker, but he's not. The finesse of his striking is not at the same level as Conor's. I don't think he can submit Conor. I think he's going to take 25 minutes to beat him. It, that's, that's the only way he could beat him. Whereas Conor needs half a second to beat him. If Conor lands a straight shot, 
on his chin. It's game over, it don't yeah. matter who you are, he'll knock you out, you know. So I think Gunnar will knock him out. That's that's the way I see it. Obviously you've got a, a really good connection with SBG Ireland lads as well, but obviously Gunnar Nelson from uh, the Molinar gym. Tell us a little bit about obviously going to Iceland that you're training out there. So yeah. tell us a little bit about the uh, the Milner guys gym. over there. Milner, sorry, yeah. <laughs> Milner. <laughs> Milner gym. Yeah, we are actually both of us going out on uh, quite a um, Matt Inman and a few other lads from my gym. We're all going out on Sunday, this Sunday for um, a week's training camp. Uh, the guys over at Mjolnir, they're, they're just amazing. They always welcome us. Uh, Gunny always lets us stay at his, or Halle, Gunny's, Gunny's dad puts us up or whatever. Amazing training. Just a beautiful place to be in, good environment for a good week of training. And um, the gym's just solid, man. It's a huge gym. The Jits class maybe has 60, 70 guys on it. You know, so I think they've got about five or six black belts in there. And they've got a decent MMA team coming up now. So um, it's, every time I go there, I learn a good few bits. Uh, I, I, I knock my ego down a little bit when I get just rolled all over by Gunny. And uh, it's a good, it's a good experience all in all. So I, I like to do that every time I fight now. Mm. Carl, you know, Carl Tanswell got us hooked up with them guys, and he's, you know, helped me get in there with them a bit. So. All right. Anything else you want to say? No one you want to thank, or anyone who supported you before we finish? I just want to thank you, Ian. Thank well, you. it's a pleasure. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. <laughs> All right, thanks as always. Martin 50 Cal Stapleton and uh, Antonio Sheldon. Thank you. Well, that was our first episode of MMA Uncaged TV. Many more to come. We've got some real good stars. Jamie, who are you looking forward to in the future? I can't wait to see, hopefully, the, uh, the Brendan and Paddy fight. I mean, if that happens, that's going to be one of the biggest fights, if not the biggest fight and in the UK. we need to get them on our couch. We do definitely need to get them both on the couch at the same time. Fantastic fight, that. And obviously, Martin Stapleton versus Ronnie Mann. I mean, come on, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, for more information, please check out our Twitter feed or our website. There. Or follow me on at IanM16Butlin on Twitter or Instagram. And Jamie? I, I don't know it, but get on it. <laughs> Just leave it like that. <laughs>